the other cars as well. You know, he, that's what gets very tricky when you start leasing engines is when you find advantages in there. You know, those advantages are going to be distributed to, to every car, really. And there's there's no other way around it because perhaps that tune-up needs a different piston or a different, you know, some sort of a different cam or, or some part of the engine to make it live all day long. So, you know, that that's unique. That's what happens in this sport. So now Paul and Brad need to make it. If they really truly have an advantage, they have to decide – how they're going to manage that advantage this year and not race against it. You know, if it was a Hendrick engine, they'd be racing against it. You know, anything I find in the engine side, um, it goes out to all the leased cars. They pay, you know, a lot of money to lease a good power plant, and they deserve the best we have, so we treat them just like a house car. We had Travis Geisler with us last week in Bagman, and I asked him, you know, well, what are you going to You don't just get it. and he, They're going to put their own spin on it. I mean, of course they are. I mean, they're Penske racing. Yeah. But that relationship is going to be interesting to watch develop. Certainly. It is. It's something you know? we've learned over time. You know, we've been in the Hendrick. Uh, Hendrick has been in the leasing program for a long, long time, uh, as well as Yates. You know, they've done the same thing. So it is It is the line that's very hard. It gets blurred very quickly where sports and business cross. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, it's a uh, – I'm glad I'm a crew chief. I worry about my car. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to manage that relationship. Katie in Wyoming, you're up next with Steve Lutard. Katie, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for taking my call. Our pleasure. Hi, Steve. Hey, Katie. How are you? I'm good, even though it's 530 in the morning here. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Yes. Uh, Anyway, I was wondering about testing last week. You know how you had a rain delay? Oh, yes. Oh, I remember it. Yes. (laughs) And I I know how how testing is so important. I was wondering if you still got to run through everything you wanted to on Friday. Well, you know, we didn't get to run through everything. You know, I, as a crew chief, I tell myself, if we ever get through the list, I was nowhere near prepared enough. You know, you should have enough to be able to go more than the time you have on the racetrack. But there was one good thing. The rain delay was in Charlotte. So I actually just went back to the shop. I, we're only five minutes from the racetrack. I still got a lot done, worked on the Speedway cars, um, just left a handful of guys over there to work on the car we were testing. So it was still a productive day. But without a doubt, track time is extremely valuable. So, uh, you know, I think that rain in Charlotte is causing Nashville to get really busy. I think the <laughs> next two weeks... Uh, maybe next three weeks, Nashville's going to have a lot of cars on it, uh, a lot of guys trying to figure out what they need to do. Um, you know, that test was a good p- place to see how everyone has adapted to the Generation 6 car and see kind of where you stack up. So uh, we didn't get through all of our lists, but it was a positive test. We got a lot done, and uh, it was uh, a little chilly, but other than that, successful. Well, I was going to ask you about it. Those cold temperatures, is that going to, you know, obviously you're not going to be racing in too many I hope, conditions like that. Well, it's really hard at Charlotte, too, because when it cools off, it becomes really one groove down around the bottom of three and four. And, um, you know, we were running like 28 flats. I think that's what the pole will be when we come back in the summer. So it's really hard. And when you test in those conditions, the grip is so high, it's really hard to to get a sense if you're really learning anything. So uh, it was frustrating. But we have – the list is so long of things we're trying to learn on this car. It's it's something as simple as will parts and pieces hold up. You know, we have this new – increased rear camber well the, the axles we ran last year and drive plates those won't won't live to this new so now it's a whole new part but will that part live so uh, you saw a lot of teams out there running a lot of laps and i think they were all doing the same thing trying to find out where they were mechanically are they ready to go 500 miles why is nashville the go-to place i know that pickings are slim on the track front that where you can do you know tests and not be charged for them now but why is nashville why does everybody wear that concrete out of nashville well, there's a few reasons from our, our standpoint, Bad, You know, the first one, and this seems silly, but it's the biggest track available with soft walls. You know, there's a couple other big tracks out in the Midwest that are available, but they don't have soft walls. And that's been such a huge uh, step in the safety of our sport. We feel we have an obligation to our drivers to take them somewhere that we would race at as far as comparable safety. Mm-hmm. So Nashville's a great facility. Um, it's upkeep is there. I mean, you can go. It's it's not close, but reasonably close to go test. And there's really not a whole lot of other faster tracks. You know, uh, Pikes Peak, we've been out there a few times, but, you know, it gets a little chilly in January in Pikes Peak. It's yeah. hit or miss on the weather. It's hit or miss on Nashville on the weather, but there's just really not a whole lot of other options. 866 Pit Lane, line six. 